Hi friends, today we shall see what is insulin resistance. Now I have said this before also that insulin resistance is the biggest medical challenge of modern times. And I say this because almost each and every lifestyle disease, be it diabetes type 2, obesity, hypertension, dyslipidemia, fatty liver disease, a PCOD, every lifestyle disease is either directly or indirectly uh, influenced by the insulin resistance in your body. Now, during the course of my talk today and in the subsequent videos, I shall uh, narrate the game that this uh, hormone insulin plays in our body in a very simple manner, citing some offbeat examples uh, with the sole intention of uh, trying to make you people comprehend things in a better manner. And once you get the basics of this part, Correct. The application to reverse your lifestyle disease or to reverse your obesity will become that much more easier. Now, let us straight away come to this hormone insulin. Now, we have discussed it before. Insulin hormone is produced uh, by the beta cells in your gland called pancreas. Now, insulin is also called the growth hormone. It plays uh, a lot of role in your body. But one of the most critical role it plays is to get your blood glucose down. It pushes the glucose into your cells to give you energy. And that's one of the primary job of insulin. Now insulin, you know, broadly we can classify into two types. The basal or the, or the background insulin. And this insulin is released by the pancreas uh, throughout the day. When you are not eating, when you are sleeping, you know, when you are resting. And then there is something called the bolus insulin. And it is this secretion or release of this bolus insulin that we are going to talk during the course of our discussions. And bolus insulin is what? It is the insulin that is released by pancreas when we have food, plain and simple. And just see this, uh, uh, see this graph or see this diagram to understand as to how the insulin secretion happens or how the pancreas responds to the various macronutrients that we have in our diet. Now, the moment we have carbohydrates in our diet, the response, the insulin response is very high. It is moderate for protein and it is absolutely low for fats. So, when you take a diet which is which is very rich or very high in carbohydrates, the insulin response in your, in your blood is very high. And now this will explain as to how we have got into this vicious circle, uh, ultimately resulting into insulin resistance. So when we eat food and when, when we eat food which is rich in carbohydrates, we obviously secrete too much of insulin. And what has happened over past 50-60 years is that the food industry or the carbohydrate industry coupled with lifestyle changes and social obligations has corrupted our mind so much that we have started taking uh, uh, as much as 60 to 80 percent of carbohydrate in our daily diet. And that's the, and, and, and that's the real reason as to why our body is slowly, slowly becoming insulin resistant. Because when we take, when we take uh, a carbohydrate high diet, the amount of glucose in our blood goes up. Now, initially the body is able to cope up with it. But finally, over passage of time, you know, over passage of years, and uh, uh, the body gets uh, into a state where there is too much of insulin in your blood, and that stage is called hyperinsulinemia. But after 5, 10, 15 years, the body finally gives up. And then the blood glucose crosses the threshold level because it cannot enter into the cells and it is floating around in your blood. And once the glucose is floating around in your blood, you, you become diabetic. But once you are devoid of energy, the glucose does not enter into your cells. Obviously, you feel fatigued, you feel, uh, you feel hungry. And once you feel hungry, you again eat food. And, and somewhere we can use this word, you know, the sugar cravings or the carb cravings. It's very common with diabetics. 
or somebody who is at a pre-diabetic stage. And then you again get into this vicious circle of eating more carbs, more carbs, more glucose, more glucose, more insulin resistance. And what is this insulin resistance? It is the lack of sensitivity. The chabi is not opening the lock. And why is it not opening the lock? What is that rust which has come into the cells? Now to explain this, I will give you, a, uh, give you an example. Let us take, say, example of a married couple. And all those who are married, try and recollect uh, the first night or the initial days of your, uh, of your marriage. And the mere touch or the mere voice of your spouse would ignite so much of sensitivity in your body. That's the way it was when you got married. And that's the way the body is. That's the way our body is. The trillion of cells in our body are supposed to be sensitive to insulin. Insulin aya, apna kaam kiya, glucose andar gaya. Insulin says thank you. The body says thank you. The cells say thank you. I've got the energy. And your blood glucose or the glucose in your blood is normal. It's, it's 100. So perfect. But the problem is that with too much of carb-heavy diet, with intake of too much of glucose, the insulin levels over uh, over weeks and months and years have gone up high, and you know, and they've gone up so much high that the body just uh, loses that sensitivity. And to and to compare it with the example of a married couple, just imagine if uh, if after uh, marriage you were locked up in a room with your spouse. You and your spouse locked up in a room for days, weeks, months, years. I mean, you're going to lose that sensitivity, which you still remain, which you still maintain. So once you are very close to each other, once, once the proximity between two uh, individuals is very, uh, is, is very high, that proximity makes you lose the sensitivityness. And hence, and, and we have gone so bad in our eating habits that forget about locking up a couple in a room. We have literally tied up the couple, you know, with a, with, with a rope. And then we are talking about sensitivity. The insulin and the cells are continuously in touch with each other because we, we, we eat the whole day and we eat carb-heavy diet. We keep on taking glucose throughout the day, be it, for, be it in form of rusk or poha or biscuits or namkeen. It, 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 it ain't be mitha, it ain't be sweet. There is glucose everywhere and I will cover glucose in detail later on. And I have partially said about it in my previous video. So with such heavy and continuous intake of glucose, we have, <coughs> sorry, we have only ensured that the proximity between the insulin and the cells of our body is maintained 24-7 days, weeks, months. So obviously that sensitivity is going. We have tied them with a rope. If I tie you and your wife even now with a rope, after two days you will be saying, Ki, Kholo mere ko. and here we have tied them for 5, 10, 15 years. Obviously there is no sensitivity and the resistance level goes up and one fine day it breaks and you become diabetic. Okay, So now let's see as to what is the relationship between a diabetic type 2 and obesity. You know, six, 70 to 80 percent of diabetics are obese. And what is the real relation? Well, it's all to do with the hormone insulin. This hormone insulin is also called the fat storage hormone. It tells your body to store fat. Now, once the glucose level in your blood goes up and the cells start uh, and, and, and the pancreas releases too much of insulin and the cells start resisting insulin, the extra glucose is then stored in liver in the form of glycogen. Now, glycogen is nothing but chains of glucose. It is the emergency rations which is stored in your liver. Now here we can take an example of a refrigerator or a fridge. So your liver is like a fridge. Advantages, easy to access. You can open anytime, put in your extra food into it. Whenever you are hungry, you can take it out and you can have it. But there is only one drawback. 
it has got limited storage space so when and what is that limited storage space it is 120 to 125 grams that is what your your liver can hold so the glycogen stored stored in your liver in an adult is approximately between 120 to 125 grams now whatever extra glucose is there after that that all gets synthesized as fats fats in your body and the fats we can compare it with a cold storage house now the advantage with cold storage house is that it has got ample space you can keep storing as much food as you want but the drawback is that the route to that cold storage house is pretty long you have to get out of your house wear your shoes wear your dress take out your car take the extra food drive all the way to the uh, cold storage house and then store things there you can store unlimited and this process of synthesis of fats wherein too much of glucose is then converted into lipids by the liver is called lipogenesis and this transshipment of extra glucose getting converted into lipids or fats and getting stored in your body as adipose tissues um, is controlled by this this hormone insulin so what is this insulin doing insulin is like a traffic police it is the traffic police just outside your house between the refrigerator and the cold storage house insulin controls insulin tells how much where how fast to get deposited and once we are into a carb heavy diet or a diet which is which is high on glucose and our refrigerator is full the glycogen stores are full it all gets converted into fats uh, through a lengthy process called lipogenesis and we shall we shall discuss the reverse engineering now this is lipogenesis the traffic police in between tells the liver aane do jaane do jama ho jao as fats lipogenesis we will discuss the reverse engineering when we discuss about fat loss and that is lipolysis this is lipogenesis that will be lipolysis wherein that that fat cell is going to get broken down and ultimately it is going to get out of your body we shall see it later so uh, a lot of people ask whether you know obesity is a reason for diabetes or diabetes is a reason for obesity half the time you will find uh, people telling you that you are diabetic so lose weight lose weight but this is the complete cycle of and complete relationship between glucose and obesity and it's like a story of a murgi and a anda hen and an egg now which came first one does not know but one thing is very sure that there is a hormone insulin which which is acting like a traffic police in between and is responsible for diabetics to become obese and for person who are obese you know, they could be in a state of hyperinsulinemia so the blood glucose levels are down so you say i'm not diabetic but the insulin levels are high in your body and getting obese and then getting diabetic so whether it is diabetics becoming obese or obese people becoming diabetic it's one of the same things well besides being the cause of diabetic or diabetes mellitus type 2 insulin resistance is also responsible for a number of other ailments that we suffer the lifestyle ailments and the first thing it affects is your heart health yes insulin resistance is responsible for lowering your hdl or the good cholesterol it is responsible for uh, narrowing down of your arteries by plaque you know, we call it atherosclerosis is responsible for heart attacks in fact if you look at this diagram the risk ratio for heart attack is highest for people with high insulin much much higher than even say the factors like total cholesterol ldl cholesterol and high blood pressure so that is how dangerous high insulin levels in your body are or they indicate insulin resistance is also responsible for poor liver health it results in liver cirrhosis your bilirubin counts go up there's weakness loss of appetite and it is also responsible for various 
uh, neurological and metabolic changes in your body and some of these uh, symptoms are seen uh, in diabetics also and they are uh, frequent urination, excessive thirst, hunger, sugar cravings, bloating, heartburn which is so common, constipation, sleep apnea and besides all this another important thing that uh, high insulin in your blood or insulin resistance in your body affects is the hormonal imbalance. And this hormonal imbalance is seen in your estrogen dominance. The polycystic ovarian symptoms show up in ladies or in females in, in, in form of acne, facial hair, infertility. It, it, it shows up in your low thyroid levels, hypothyroidism. And all this combined with uh, high blood glucose, high triglycerides or lipids, it all ends up into making you fat. It increases the fat storage. And insulin resistance is a primary factor that you are not able to lose weight. And hence, I always quote this, uh, uh, this, this, this famous quote of Dr. Jason Fung. And you know, I call it the obesity code. He says that insulin is the main driver of obesity, not calories. Like fools, we are worried about calories. We are counting calories like fools. We think that by having... 300 calories of ice cream we can just go next day morning to the gym and burn off those 300 calories so you have 300 calories of ice cream then you go next day morning and you start running for 3-4 kilometers you burn off this 300 and everything is no it's, it, it, it's not so simple the hormonal response is very very critical and what is the hormonal response the insulin response in your blood so obviously 300 calories coming from say ice cream and 300 calories coming from say Greek salad is totally different. The, the response of hormones besides insulin, various other hormones will be way too high when, when, when you take that 300 calories of ice cream vis-a-vis -vis, say 300 calories coming from Greek salad. So obviously, next day morning when you go to the gym uh, and you have burnt off 300 calories on the treadmill say for example, I mean the response that the body will show to your doing that physical activity will be different uh, when it tries to balance out the ice cream and when it tries to balance out the salad. And that's what we have to understand. So it is insulin. Insulin is the uh, main driver of obesity, not calories. And I shall end with a very nice example as to what should we really focus on. And here I will give an example of your house. You enter your house, you enter your living room and you find that there is water dripping from the roof and your floor is getting wet. So what is the first action you will do? You will quickly run, get a bucket and try to put the bucket at the spot where the floor was getting wet. But is that the correct way of looking at things? Is that the solution? No. It only limits the effect. Yes, it prevents your floor from getting wet. That's fine. But... In order to sort this problem, you need to go to the real cause. You need to eliminate the cause. And what is the cause? The cause is the hole in the roof from where the water is dripping. So you need to get out once the, you know, once it uh, stops raining. You need to climb on top of the roof and you need to plug that hole. That's the way to address the issue. You need to eliminate the cause. And hence, if... If diabetes, obesity, lifestyle disease, these are the wet floor, don't just address the wet floor. Address the cause. And what is the cause? The cause is insulin resistance. And if you address the cause, you are automatically going to sort out the problems. In the uh, subsequent video, we shall uh, see how to address this cause and how to eliminate this cause, this insulin resistance. Keep watching. Keep smiling, guys. Bye.